Welcome back. So you know Francine Brokaw as our Good Day Entertainment correspondent, but there is so much more to know, and maybe you know her from her show here on Channel 6 with Beyond the Red Carpet, but how in the world did Francine get to do all that cool stuff? How does she meet these amazing people that she brings to us all the time to keep us engaged and to keep us interested? Did you know that Francine has been a professional writer for over 30 years? She's focused on entertainment, travel, celebrity, uh, products, books, music reviews. She's done it all. She's written several novels and short stories, and she's got some yet to be uh, yet to be made screenplays. I mean, the creativity is is all packed into one little Francine. She hosts her own TV show, Beyond the Red Carpet which airs on local TV as well as YouTube. And of course, she's the Good Day Orange County entertainment correspondent. But I'm honored to say she's also a friend and a friend of Good Day. So welcome, Francine. This time, we're not talking Disney. We're not talking movies or books. We're talking about you. And that is so exciting not to, I don't want to scare you. <laughs> no, that's unique because I'm usually talking to other people about them, you know. <laughs> exactly. So I have to admit, I used to be the guest and then I became the host. And there's a whole different vibe about being on this side of the microphone. But for today, I think our viewers would love to know. You know, how did you get to be the woman we see doing the things you do? And and honestly, just between us girls, I'd like to know who some of the coolest people are that you've enjoyed meeting and interviewing over the years. So how did you start? Uh, well, I was actually writing for MSA and I was writing technology and it got so stressful I looked out my window one day and I said, gee, I'm in the entertainment capital of the world. Why didn't I switch from technology to entertainment? And I called uh, one of the local TV stations, one of the entertainment ed editors, and he got me started. And from then, it's just tenacity, hard work, being professional, uh, being polite, not demanding, um, just having having the sense that you're no better than anybody else when you interview anybody. I mean, you a lot of a lot of my I know my colleagues will think, well, I'm press, so da da da. But no, uh, I I do not put anybody on a pedestal. I just talk to them as people and I think that's gotten me where I am. Well, honestly, I know the industry has changed insanely in the 30 years that you and I have been in it. Mm -hmm. And the fact that you could simply write to or call an entertainment editor or producer and have them call you back and say, oh, sure, come on. <laughs> you know, it's it's way different today. So yes, how... the, you know, the, the Internet has changed things because you've got bloggers, you've got influencers. And these days, those people are getting the first invitations to to cover things. Before, when I started, it was print. And online was way down there. It was te television, radio, and print. And slowly and slowly, online started creeping up. And then they got the preferential treatment. And now it's it's just mainly influencers and bloggers and they have they're they're to me they're that's not really professional in my opinion I, I i'm a print dinosaur i i i am very interested in good grammatical structure and that's not what you get online so it's it's definitely changed well, I'd say the focus is different, right? What you get online is immediate information. Mm -hmm. You know, the whole idea is to just get there first where done is better than perfect. And for those of us who angsted over perfect for so many years, sometimes we've had to get over ourselves too, just to get the job done in the way things are today. So you as a content creator though, continue to get the interviews, get the stories, bring us, you know, cool updated um, 
you know, information about events, about all kinds of things. And do you still love it or is it just hard now? It's a little more difficult because I do have to uh, substantiate to the public, the publicists really run this town or the town of uh, Hollywood. You have to show them that you have the people reading you or watching you. Uh, if it's online, it's how many viewers do you have? How many subscriptions do you have? Well, I have I have a YouTube channel and I don't have, I have I learned some odd subscriptions at this time because I'm not spending the time on it. You have to work on those things 24 seven. And I've got other things to do with my life. I'm, I'm writing for newspapers and magazines and doing my show, which is coming to an end in December and doing your show. It's, it's just to be an influencer is a 24 seven job. And I'm not willing to do that at this point in my life. No, I think what you bring is so interesting because like you said, you're writing for newspapers, you're doing television, you are out there, you know, just creating different levels of depth and content. It's it's very different than what we see today online. And I really appreciate the fact that whenever we're together, if we're not talking about some current event, then we're actually looking back and we're often looking at what's great in the world of entertainment and celebrity from the past, which informs the future, or at least it should, but most people don't even know it exists anymore. Yeah, you know, the, the, what bothers me is there are no fact checkers anymore. People can just write anything they want and they can put it out there, false or true or whatever. I am so used to having editors, one editor for this, one editor, a fact checker, somebody writing me back saying, did this person actually say that? You have the quotes, you have the receipts for it. And that's just not the way of the world anymore. So it, it is frustrating. It is. But it we, we do work hard. We do work yes. hard to bring interesting and vital guests to the shows and, mm -hmm. and to find, you know, information that really is interesting. So that it's not just information for information's sake. So with that in mind, how do you find your guests for your show now? Oh boy, I have been in this business for over 30 years. So I have contacts everywhere. And I think I have made the reputation of being reliable, truthful, honest, and willing to do what it takes to get the right stories. And uh, so I, I have so many, my, my contact list is so long. And people want to share it with want me to share it with them, and there's no way because I have built that myself. That's that's my legacy. Well, your relationships are gold, mm -hmm. right? With actually, have people have called me and said we would like to come and do your show. I want to get this information out. Would you be willing to interview me, and we'll get this information out? Yeah, I said yes, that would be fine. So I I have had not only artists or celebrities contact me, but uh, publicists as well, saying that we want this story out. If you can find a way to do it and get your information and plug this, whatever, that would be wonderful. So that's how I, that's how I do it. So I'd love to hear, and I'm sure everybody else would too, tell us some of your favorites. You know, I've been asked that a lot. I really like the old timers, the, the Julie Andrews, uh, James Garner, uh, uh, John Voigt. Uh, I, I really feel that they have a sense of the business and life and are not in, in it for a one hit wonder type of thing like the young some of the younger ones that I was doing 10 years ago that I have no idea who they are now I just blocked them out of them uh they didn't have the professionalism uh, they were rude they would come into an interview with a can of beer and you you don't do that so I I like the old people it would have been fun to be around during the Hollywood um system when they had the the 
the system where the studios would really, the studio system where they would kind of manage the actors and make sure they didn't, you know, step out of line, but we don't have that anymore. And uh, it, it's just, it's all different. It changes even from last year, it has changed quite a bit. If you could time travel in the Hollywood world and go back and be in that era, would would you be in the 40s, 50s? Like, would that be your, your time I frame? I think the 50s, because you, you have, um, well, the, Grace Kelly, uh, Dean Martin, I love Dean Martin, the Rat Pack, and um, let's see, uh, Cary Grant. I was just speaking with a friend of mine who works for BBC, and he knew Cary Grant, and I'm thinking, oh, <laughs> that would have been so cool. Um, yeah, uh, I never got a chance to interview Doris Day. I would have loved to have, but I never got a chance to do that. So from your favorite interviews, what really, aside from their courtesy and appreciation for what you were doing for them, but really, what really jumped out at you from your favorite meet and greets? And, and do you still have that today with your guests? No, uh, James Garner, I I've told this story, I think years ago on Good Day Orange County. Uh, I was in a, a roundtable interview with James Garner and usually they give you a lot of amount of time. Well, he was telling the story and it was really a good story. And the publicist came in to say, okay, time's up. And he says, no, I'm not finished with my story. And so he went on for another five or six minutes. It was cool. Today they do and they just pop up and leave. And also um, he's no longer around, but Chris Lawford, I, I became friends with him. And he's uh, Peter Lawford's son. And we were talking a lot about the old Hollywood that he grew up in, not the Kennedy section of his life, but the Hollywood part. And we were talking, and I was scheduled for a 20-minute interview with him. It ended up going 55 minutes. Even though they came and they said, your time is up. He says, that's fine. Let's just continue. So Chris Lawford sounds like he had his priorities in the right place. And I believe a lot of them, a lot of them did. Who today do you feel still carries that kind of appreciation for what it takes to keep them in the spotlight, you know, in that kind of professional way? I was just talking to Chris Lemon, Jack Lemon's son. And it's interesting because there are about four or five celebrity, maybe six, that I've interviewed that we've become actual friends. And uh, Chris Lawford, uh, Jay Osmond, uh, let's see, um, Chris Lemon, Lady Colin Campbell. I call her quite often just to check in. Uh, they, they're in it for the long haul. They, they're they in it for information. They're in it for professionalism. And uh, I, I, like I said, I just was speaking with Chris Lemon the other day. He is such an amazing, an amazing man. And I never got in a chance to interview his father, Jack. And that is another one I would love to have spoken with. Yeah. But Chris does the greatest Jack Lemon. So sometimes I will have him do Jack Lemon. And I'll feel like I'm interviewing Jack Lemon. Well, goodness For, knows if yeah. somebody if somebody can imitate him, it should be his son. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and he does a fabulous Walter Matthau. Oh my gosh, he's really good. And you know the the, the guy has had a double lung, lung transplant, so he's really in a precarious situation in life. And he just has the most amazing outlook. That uh, it's something I wish was contagious because I could use that. I think we could all use a, a heavy dose of positive outlook. And and honestly, I think reading and listening to your interviews and your stories, we get that. And it's nice to hear it from somebody else who we may or may not know, but we feel like we know. And in many cases, we invite them into our homes all the time. So yeah, I think that's, you know, that's a place to really look for some additional support and it there's absolutely nothing wrong with entertainment for entertainment's sake well, and, you know, but sometimes you do 
interview somebody and you say, God, I hope I never get to talk to that person again, or I don't want to see that person's movie. I, this, this person was just so rude. It, that, In there's every generation, there's going to be people like that. I don't think that's distinct to today or, yes. you know, yesteryear, but, but on the other hand, if you make a list of the goods and the not so, mm -hmm. I think the goods win, don't they? Yes, another one that I actually I should mention was um, Shirley MacLaine. She won't come on my show because she doesn't do that kind of thing. But I, I've spoken with her in person about five or six times, and I've really come away from those interviews just really filled with fun and love. She's such a delight. Yeah, no, I have to say it's it's lovely to hear from them on a personal level. It It takes the pressure off them as well. I think we give them an opportunity to just be themselves. I know my interview earlier or last year with Helen Hunt um, was was that way. And it was just very homey and low key and and what a joy. So yes. I, I totally feel your appreciation for the opportunity to do that. And it is a privilege. It really is. And we're grateful to you for all these years bringing us great insights and great information. So thank you. It's been a long haul. It doesn't, sometimes it doesn't seem like 30 years, but uh, some days I wake up and I've got this and this and this and this and this article to go and this deadline in here. And so I think, oh my gosh, 30 years of this. Wow. I put, it, I put it does my... fly by. It really does. And frankly, from your treasury of work, it means you've been doing the right thing all along. So I'm Thank always you. grateful to meet people who are where they're meant to be and gifting the rest of us with that genius. So thank you so much. I know I'm going to put the uh, website up where people can find the book and also your show. And we're going to see you again, not too long from now on good day with some upcoming Coolio fun events. The so. book is actually over 10 years old and it is a little dated because, because as we just spoke, things have changed so much. But this lays out, the book lays out exactly what it was like 10 years ago. And from then I should read, actually I should update it because it's completely different now. <laughs> There's plenty of opportunity to do that. Thank you for taking the time, Francine. I know you've got a major long list of to-dos. Oh, yeah. And we'll look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll be right back.